uh, we uh, need your approval to start the uh, webinar. Please, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Chairman Bimbrad, um, distinguished uh, panel speakers uh, and uh, dear participants, good morning and uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, I will uh, welcome you all in today's <coughs> webinar. The today's uh, theme of the webinar uh, is the evolving geopolitical scenario in the Indian Ocean region. Um, through COVID-19 pandemic implications for the Bay of Bengal area. We have divided the theme in three subsections. For the three subsections, we have three nominated respected speakers. I will introduce them, but the subsections of the themes are, first is the geopolitical scenario in the Indian Ocean, and then we trickle down to security environment in the Bay of Bengal. And then again, we converge lastly to the geoeconomical environment and impact in the Bay of Bengal. So your participant, you need to understand how we design today's um, theme in three subsection. First, we try to understand from the learned speakers geopolitics, and then we trickle down to security environment, and then we come to the very uh, need geoeconomical conditions and environment in the Indian Oceans. We have distinguished three panels speaker. First speaker is the Rear Admiral ASMA Owl retired, who is very known to the naval environment as well as outside and abroad. He did his staff course from Defense Service Command and staff course from Mirpur, and also attended a staff course in the uh, Turkish War College. He did his MDS from National University and did his NDC from National Defense College. And uh, uh, he is also a directing staff in SCC. He was directing a staff in DCC Mirpur. He was a defense attache in Sri Lanka and also a high commissioner to the Republic of Maldives. And he is the founding member of Bimrad. Um, uh, the Dr. Imtiaz Ahmed is a very, very well-known personalities and researchers. We all know him and uh, no boundary actually is the nation and international. <clears throat> the professor of international relations and director center for genocide studies at the University of Dhaka. He was a student at the University of Dhaka, visiting professor abroad. There, there are many uh, universities, possibly he, uh, he is a visiting <clears throat> professor. He has authored, co-authored or edited 22 books and eight monographs. His recently publications are The Plight of Stateless Rohingya, Response of the State Society and the International Community, Human Rights in Bangladesh, for example. Uh, People of Many Rivers, Tales from the River Banks. So these are a few <coughs> of his latest books. Dr. Afta Balom is also a well-known professor from Dhaka University uh, from the geology and uh, geophysics. Now he is a teacher professor of teaching professor of geological oceanography in Bangladesh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Maritime University. He did his BSc and MSc and uh, PhD in applied geophysics all from Indian School of Mines. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and today's participants, those are the, in brief, the <coughs> acknowledgement of today's 
distinguished speakers. And uh, with my brief introduction, I will request our chairman, <laughs> Bimrad, to give uh, uh, welcome, give his welcome address. Respected chairman, Bimrad. Thank you. Thank you, DG Bimrad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Distinguished guests, respected keynote speakers, dear participants, proficient academicians, maritime scholars, and researchers, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to all of you. It is indeed a great pleasure and privilege for me to warmly welcome you to today's webinar. I hope all of you are in good health and keeping safe in COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, Bimrad is a very new institution. This is a place <laughs> of maritime think tank. We have just completed one year of our journey on 3rd July this year. Despite a lot of challenges due to COVID-19, we have been progressing steadily. However, we continued our research activities with full vision and enthusiasm. We have already conducted a few webinars for our in-house researchers with the help of speakers from abroad. The in-house researchers have continued their researches and their written articles are being published in newspapers, which are also uploaded in our newly built online palbd.org website. Our researchers are also participating in different webinars regularly. As part of our effort, today, we arrange this timely needed important webinar. Dear participants, Indo-Pacific scenario is, is in continuous flux. However, <coughs> during the last six months or so, the maritime scenario in Indo-Pacific is fast changing due to US-China economic war. The recent Sino-Indian standoff at Himalayan border has widened the complexity to a further extent. Our livelihood is dependent on Bay of Bengal and our trade is mostly seaboard. So Bay of Bengal is very much vital for us. <laughs> we, we believe in peace and we want that peace should prevail in this region. So today we have taken this initiative for this webinar. And I am confident that our discussion will play a significant role in developing some roadmap for BIMRAD. Your vast experience will definitely navigate our voice safe and successful. Before I conclude, I would like to convey my heartfelt thanks to all distinguished guests and maritime scholars for your kind presence in today's webinar. I would like to express my gratitude, especially to the respected keynote speakers for taking the pain and to make today's event very meaningful. Stay safe. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all. Uh, thank you very much, respected Chairman Bimrad. I, <laughs> before I uh, uh, go to the next, uh, I will request you to see the today's program. Uh, can you see? Rashid? Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, just in brief, we are supposed to start the keynote speech, uh, speech at uh, 1107. Uh, however, due to technical problem, we were delayed. So we will start with the keynote speech one with the Rear Admiral Oval, sir, and then Dr. Imtiaz, sir, and the third one is Dr. Aftab Alun Khan. Uh, let's see, we'll try to cover up the time. And then there will be open discussion, comments and question session, and then summing up by moderator, closing remarks, end of the webinar. So let's see, and I will request the first speaker, Red Mirala, the SMA, are all retired. Sir, over to you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, you are loud, loud and clear. Okay. <clears throat> Chairman Bimrad, Director General, distinguished uh, fellow panel speakers and uh, dear participants, assalamu alaikum. 
Thank you very much for inviting me to this webinar, which has been premised on uh, COVID-19. Because we know the Indian Ocean, we know Bengal, we know uh, geopolitics, uh, but uh, the question is now how the, the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a microscopic virus shattering the entire world, life and livelihood, economy, and according to the UN Secretary General, his latest uh, Manson, Nelson Mandela speech, he has described that it has brought the world to the breaking point where many fault lines are surfacing in uh, you know, broken health sector, education, and uh, inequality. And that emphasizes massive development in this sector to fix the world. So spotlight is also on the huge uh, military expenditure. In 2019, it was $1.9 trillion. And that was 2.2% of global GDP. <coughs> so hope is that uh, this pandemic will teach us good lesson and we'll have a better world where the confrontation will be less and it will be more people friendly uh, world. And uh, maybe uh, experts like uh, our uh, Dr. Imtiaz, they will be writing a new narrative of geopolitics and international relations based on non-Western uh, concept. So that's our uh, hope. But what is the reality? Let's check it in the context of the Indian Ocean area. Uh, you know the Indian Ocean area, and that cannot be, uh, you know, uh, described in isolation. It is part of the uh, Indo-Pacific ecosystem, which covers half of the world surface and half of the world's population, and two thirds of the global trade. <coughs> so it is a very, very important uh, geopolitical uh, canvas. But the geopolitics may, may basically deals with the balance of power. You know the uh, threat trust for influence and getting your interest uh, secure, secure. Now in this uh, area, uh, there are many theories like the Mackinders, uh, Heartland, the Spikesman, uh, Rimland, and our great Admiral Mahan's uh, sea power. Uh, these uh, theories, all they can interpret and all that can be applied to the Indo-Pacific region. So let's look at, uh, I'll first go over to the Pacific uh, theater, say, and then come to the Indian Ocean theater, because these are all linked. Now in the Pacific, the, uh, you know, uh, through, through the pre-pandemic period or the before a pandemic, we have seen that, uh, you know, there was immense geopolitical uh, conflict between United States and allies, and then uh, China. And we have seen the policy articulation like uh, pivot Asia, then rebalancing, and finally the Indo-Pacific strategy by the America and its allies, emphasizing our freedom of navigation and uh, rule-based maritime order and quality and connectivity. The China got threatened uh, by that, and they have come up with what is known as the Belt and Road Initiative, which goes for China being uh, the global, uh, you know, the warehouse for production. It has to export. So it is threatened uh, by the Indian uh, Indo-Pacific strategy. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiative emphasizes on multimodal, uh, the land and uh, the maritime uh, transport route uh, for getting its exports uh, to the destination uh, countries. So that uh, has brought uh, the entire region in a, in a conflicting Hello. position, conflicting uh, uh, uh -huh. geopolitical uh, uh, position. So in that context, what was happening in uh, okay. Pacific? In the Pacific, uh, the, uh, you know, the geopolitical oh, uh, dynamic crazy. is more pronounced between China, and the USA and its allies. The hotspots are Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, and the maritime disputes arising from uh, China's 
huge claim, nine dash line claim over the entire, uh, you know, South China Sea. So uh, uh, that was the, uh, you know, pre-pandemic uh, situation. And uh, America uh, was deploying its uh, massive uh, uh, the maritime forces, and China was also uh, uh, replying uh, as it, it could. And then the pandemic struck. During the pandemic, there was a one month of uh, lull period where uh, the U.S. carrier, uh, uh, you know, the Theodore Roosevelt, it got affected by coronavirus, and it has to be in quarantine in the Guam. And uh, another carrier, uh, aircraft carrier in Japan, uh, Ronald Reagan, it was under repair. For a, for a month, there, there was a sort of geopolitical vacuum in the Pacific. And at that time, China was just recovering from the pandemic and got it under control. And it went massively, uh, 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 the deployment in the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea and East China Sea. Uh, and according to the American, uh, China was bullying uh, the uh, its allies and the littoral uh, countries of these areas. So uh, uh, this was the scenario where where you are supposed to have a total concentration on pandemic uh, for the human life, but the geopolitical was in uh, full play. And uh, after a month. The entire oh, sir, uh, well, sir, I'll take it to disturb Kodi, sir. sir. Why you are not visible, sir? There any problem I'm with not your visible. webcam? No, sir. Uh, any problem with your camera? It seems to be on, but uh, you are not visible, sir. Doesn't look nice. Uh, you are speaking. Oh. <laughs> uh, can't see me. Sorry, sorry to disturb you, sir. Not yet, sir. Okay. Is this in now? Uh, not yet, sir. Uh, you are from laptop or computer, sir? Uh, uh, from mobile. Oh, sir, from mobile. So mobile, say, uh, there could be little problem. Um, uh, so there's a uh, lower button, uh, uh, view, um, uh, video. Uh, could you please check, sir, video? Yes, sir. Uh, now you're okay. visible, sir. <laughs> sir, sir, please, uh, sorry to show. Sir, you, it was not uh, uh, interesting. We couldn't see you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, thank sir, you, please, thank please, you please, very sir. much, Dinji. Uh, now oh, I can see the speaker. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> Technical glitch. Anyway, anyway yes. uh, I was talking oh, about the Pacific, Pacific uh, Theater. Right, sir. Uh, you know, the, the pandemic, how it uh, uh, brought a geopolitical uh, a vacuum there. Now, as uh, uh, you know, the, then the Americans got the, their carrier groups, and through pandemic, which didn't happen earlier, also in last uh, good about uh, four or five years, the Americans they uh, responded with deployment of dual carrier groups. One was uh, one, uh, in the Philippine Sea, uh, Taiwan Strait, and then uh, another one uh, in the South China Sea. Uh, they have just completed their uh, war game uh, recently. Uh, uh, so this dual carrier group operation is a massive deployment, uh, you know, dual carrier uh, that goes for 120, uh, you know, fighter aircraft and, uh, you know, tens and thousands of uh, uh, the uh, people uh, over there. So this was the uh, scenario uh, in, in the Pacific uh, through the uh, pandemic. And then uh, the, uh, the America came up with the policy articulation of rejecting the uh, Chinese claim on the South China Sea, uh, uh, referring to the law of the sea, UNCLOS 3. An interesting part is that uh, the, uh, America hardly cares about the international law, and it has not ratified uh, the UNCLOS also. Uh, in any case, uh, the China also doesn't care for law of the sea in the South China Sea. So that's the scenario there. Now let's come to the Indian Ocean uh, region. So you know the Indian Ocean region, this is uh, uh, our uh, area uh, connecting uh, three continents, Asia, Africa, and uh, Australia. And uh, it has uh, 26 uh, littoral countries and uh, 15 hinterland uh, countries. Now it is the energy hub 
uh, of the world uh, where uh, 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 you have uh, uh, you know 40 58 percent of the world is up and 46 percent of gas is up and 48 uh, percent of the fisheries over there then it has the sea lines of communication uh, which is uh, vital uh, giving access to the uh, 66 percent of hydrocarbon then 50 percent of the container traffic and 33 percent of bulk cargo so you can imagine how important are these sea lines of communication through the indian uh, ocean uh, area and uh, uh, these uh, uh, sea lines of communication has to go through eight uh, choke points three major and uh, five minor the three major uh, choke points uh, i will describe uh, the uh, you know indian ocean scenario in that context but here, uh, you please note that the Indian Ocean area, the geopolitical uh, rivalry, which you have seen in the uh, Pacific, uh, very pronounced. Here it is not that pro pronounced. It's a multifaceted because the main player now in the next uh, in the <coughs> new scenario, that is China, <coughs> it is <coughs> coming to the Indian Ocean. It is yet not having a, a full you know, footprint in the Indian uh, Ocean area. It's there. It's in, it's in uh, Myanmar, in Kyokchu port it is coming. It's in Gwadar in Pakistan. It's in uh, uh, the port of Jack in uh, Iran. And now uh, they have gone for the Chabahar port, which, which India was uh, trying to capitalize. Uh, there also it has its inroad recently, which is 400 billion uh, uh, you know, agreement with Iran. And it has its naval base in Djibouti. So it has its presence uh, there, but not as a com direct competitor to the US and its uh, allies. So uh, that's the scenario uh, here. And uh, here, this sea lines of communication, this three, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, choke points, the Strait of Hormuz, the Babel Mandab, and uh, uh, the Strait of uh, Malacca. I will describe in uh, sort of in the, uh, in the coronavirus uh, perspective as a three cluster. Uh, you know, the Strait of Hormuz uh, cluster, it connects the, uh, the energy rich Persian Gulf, Babel Mandab connects it with the Red Sea, and the, Bay of, uh, the Malacca Strait, uh, it connects up with the Bay of Bengal. Now, if you, if you look at the, uh, you know, the Strait of Hormuz uh, cluster, uh, uh, that's uh, is a perennial uh, source of uh, trouble, which is known as the shutter belt, the entire uh, the Persian Gulf and the Middle East source of uh, many uh, crises. So, uh, 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 so through the last year, 2019, the crisis was building up with the massive American uh, deployment uh, against Iran uh, in the uh, Persian Gulf uh, through uh, mid 2019. Then you have seen the attack on the uh, uh, Martian ships in the uh, uh, Persian Gulf. Uh, then there was a shooting down of uh, US uh, surveillance drone uh, by Iran. And uh, then uh, around the first week of January through the uh, pandemic, just the start of the uh, uh, pandemic, uh, it was on the brink of war between India, uh, between uh, Iran and United States following killing of General Qasem Soleimani in Iraq. And on 8th of January, it was in fact a, a war situation where Iran launched, uh, uh, you know, well choreographed uh, missile attack on the Iraqi uh, military bases, uh, 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 sheltering the American uh, troops. However, a uh, tweet uh, from President Dolan Trump, this all is well, diffused the tension. Somehow uh, uh, the region retracted uh, from uh, a, a conflicting uh, situation. Interestingly, while this was all this happening, the America was negotiating with Iraq about the troop withdrawal, a very interesting uh, event. And uh, that troop withdrawal, in fact, started uh, in uh, March. And uh, the Donald Trump, in fact, it was uh, his campaign promise that he will withdraw from uh, uh, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. So he kept it. The, the COVID-19 has helped Donald Trump uh, uh, to, uh, you know, withdraw from uh, withdraw troops from uh, Iraq. Uh, 
uh, whether it was strategic, uh, that there is a lot of debate on that, uh, but uh, he was successful in doing that, uh, taking help uh, of uh, the COVID-19 uh, scenario. Uh, so uh, what has uh, happened there once uh, that the security construct uh, has been uh, changed? Now there's a new, uh, the ground level vacuum for the middle power like Iran, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, Turkey, and uh, to some extent Israel uh, to fill that uh, vacuum. Uh, uh, where the big powers, uh, the USA, uh, China, uh, and Russia is already there, and how uh, these new uh, geopolitical uh, game plan uh, takes place, uh, that will decide the uh, 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 you know geopolitics in that cluster. Now let's come to the Bab el Mandab uh, cluster uh, at the Horn of uh, Africa. It's a very uh, fragile region, uh, you know, piracy, then failed state, and all, and there's a protracted. Uh, uh, war between Saudi Arabia, EOE, uh, and uh, uh, Iran-backed Houthi uh, militia in Yemen. <coughs> and interestingly, the Djibouti at the Horn of Africa, it has a military base for uh, China. It is naval base, uh, over, first overseas naval base of China. Then USA, France, and Japan has military base in Djibouti, uh, uh, right at the corner of the Bab el Mandab. Uh, there is a sort of peaceful coexistence of these big players over there. Uh, China has a conciliatory approach, which China wants to emphasize that it doesn't want to confront uh, the, uh, the America or its allies in the Indian Ocean area. Rightly so, it is the uh, yeah, uh, because uh, China doesn't have the capability to do so in the Indian Ocean area, which it has started in the uh, Pacific. While it is in conciliatory in its Djibouti uh, base, but it is having an economic grab over the entire uh, Africa. Uh, 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 that's the uh, situation in Babel Mandab uh, cluster, very important. And this is the fourth uh, uh, busiest waterway uh, connecting the Red Sea. Now let's come uh, to the, uh, uh, the Bay of Bengal uh, or the Malacca Strait uh, cluster. And uh, that I will also uh, navigate uh, the uh, talk uh, to the implication on the Bay of Bengal. The Malacca sir, request uh, you to, sir, request you to sum up quickly, sir. We're okay, already okay. 15 minutes over. Okay. okay. Now, sir, uh, the, Bay of Bengal, the Bay of Bengal has, is connected with the Malacca Strait. The Malacca Strait, um, you know, it, it, it gives access uh, to the South China Sea and the Pacific. And uh, it is the shortest route from the Red Sea and the Persian uh, Gulf uh, uh, for the uh, uh, Indian Ocean uh, uh, traffic. Now, uh, the, uh, the, uh, it is a very important sea lines of communication, uh, which traffics one fifth of the global uh, trade and 50% uh, of the oil shipment, and uh, very, very uh, uh, crucial for China. And that links to the uh, Malacca dilemma uh, for China. Now, Bay of Bengal is connected with it. Uh, which is uh, becoming uh, very important uh, now in the context of uh, the geopolitical uh, parlay. Uh, I'll refer to the Loi Institute uh, Asia Power Index, where it has uh, identified uh, the Asian powers uh, in, in the order of uh, you know, their uh, power, uh, the USA, China, uh, Japan, and India. Uh, uh, this is the order. And they are all active in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, the uh, USA is there with its uh, Indo-Pacific strategy, the Quad, and China is coming through the China-Myanmar uh, economic corridor, uh, a desperate attempt to uh, come to uh, Indian Ocean. India has its active policy to connect up uh, with uh, uh, Southeast Asia or ASEAN with this, uh, uh, you know, Kaladan multimodal project and the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, their multimodal uh, uh, road uh, connectivity and Japan has uh, uh, projects uh, like Big B, uh, the Bay of Bengal uh, Industrial Initiative in Bangladesh, and two uh, uh, the DSM, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, 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 Mekong uh, uh, Initiative in uh, Myanmar, uh, connecting uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, and uh, uh, Thailand. So uh, this is the uh, uh, scenario where. There can be a division uh, between the states, the China uh, versus uh, the uh, uh, Americans allies in the context of 
uh, Indo-Pacific strategy and the Quad. So uh, in this uh, scenario, how uh, they will uh, play up, uh, 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 that uh, will uh, impact on the Bay of Bengal. Already the NIMIS, the largest uh, US, uh, aircraft carrier, it is already in the Bay of Bengal carrying out uh, exercise with the Indian Navy. And if uh, this hits up, uh, uh, because India cannot uh, take on China uh, on the Himalayas, but India can uh, re really uh, do something here in the uh, Malacca Strait. And that will bring India closer to Quad uh, and the Indo-Pacific strategy, which earlier it was reluctant. So that is the scenario. And for us, the rest of the uh, uh, countries uh, here would expect that all these big uh, players will uh, appreciate uh, that the, without cooperation, uh, there cannot be a peaceful coexistence and the world economy uh, and the world as a whole will uh, suffer. And let's hope for a cooperative engagement rather than this contentious uh, geopolitical scenario. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Rear Admiral Aval, sir, with your very highly intellectual speech, although it's not enough time to explain such a big and huge gamut of geopolitics. However, we got some idea about the geopolitics of Bay of Bengal, Indian Ocean, and overall Indo-Pacific region. And let's uh, come to the now uh, security environment. Uh, I will request Dr. Imtiaz Ahmed. Sir, it's over to you, Dr. Imtiaz Ahmed. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I need to share my screen because I have a PowerPoint. So I hope uh, permission yes, will be given. Okay. All right, department, yes, sir. Share. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, I can see that. Can you see that? Yes, sir, we can see okay. it. Lovely. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Uh, no, uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, present uh, my views on this uh, topic. Uh, only last night, uh, at, at very late <clears throat> last night, I came to know that I have to speak for 10 minutes. Uh, somehow I had an idea that it was a bit longer, but anyway, I have a slide, uh, you know, a uh, couple of, uh, almost 18 <clears throat> slides. So I'll try to go through as quickly as possible uh, just for, uh, to, keep, uh, <clears throat> to maintain the time. And then of course, uh, when clarifications would be required, uh, we can come back uh, at uh, Q&A. So you need to bear with me uh, for a while. Uh, the topic uh, I was given uh, is, is quite a long topic. You can, you can see, I can understand the security, but uh, it's quite, quite huge. <clears throat> particularly uh, if you're not per se a, a traditional realist or, or a realist, you know, and then it really becomes uh, very difficult uh, to uh, say things in, in, in few minutes. But uh, I'll try my best uh, to give you a sense of, of my understanding uh, of regional security environment uh, in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, the region is, uh, I guess, well known to uh, all of you. Uh, this is the region we are talking about. Uh, the world is, is bigger, but, but this is the region uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are talking about. Uh, but keep in mind, and this is something that Admiral Awal already has, has given us some sense, that when we talk of Bay of Bengal, we have a bit bigger region uh, you know, over the Bay of Bengal. And, and this is, uh, you know, uh, in sum, uh, the whole lot, uh, uh, if you can uh, you know, uh, get a sense. And you can see the, the piracy that he was uh, referring to, uh, uh, the other things, uh, the conflict in, in different regions. Uh, somehow you can talk about Bay of Bengal, but it's very difficult to talk about Bay of Bengal uh, without talking about uh, the Indian Ocean region. Now, when it comes to Bay of Bengal, uh, we have all these uh, countries, uh, three, six, nine, 12 countries mainly uh, to deal with. So we can limit ourselves you know, understanding, but you know, the moment you have China and India, uh, you can see that uh, it, it is quite, quite huge uh, in terms of population, in terms of uh, economy, 
in terms of activities. There are some small ones, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, Bhutan and Maldives would be very small, uh, but uh, it, it's quite a uh, big region, uh, you know, uh, even if it is only uh, 12 countries. Uh, if you get a sense of the 12 countries, uh, you know, they're doing pretty well. Uh, I want to focus, uh, uh, you know, all of you should focus on the life expectancy at birth. Uh, this is an interesting one where it seems, uh, uh, well, Myanmar and India are, are lagging behind a little bit uh, to the rest of uh, um, other countries. Uh, all are already in, this, in, the, in the 70 and up. Uh, there is, uh, well, Singapore is already in, in 80. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, overall, it's not a bad, uh, you know, their Bengal region is, is, is doing pretty, pretty good. But, uh, you know, when it comes to Myanmar and, and India, keep in mind, uh, India has, you know, over a billion uh, people. So from that point of view, uh, yes, it's, it's lagging behind a little, uh, but I guess uh, uh, the region is, is, is doing uh, uh, pretty well. Now, I want to give that sense because the next slide is on the COVID-19. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, scenario will, uh, will tell you, and I want you to focus on death per 1 million. I think, I think this is the best way to look into the data. Uh, it doesn't really matter the confirmed cases and how many got infected. What matters is uh, how many people are dying. And it's one uh, good way uh, would be to look at uh, death per 1 million. Well, Bangladesh uh, is, is 16. Uh, uh, India is a little bit higher, uh, 21. Uh, in numbers, it would be very high, as you know, but they have huge population. Uh, uh, Indonesia is also have a high population, but they are with Bangladesh. Uh, interestingly, you know, Maldives, uh, per 1 million is, 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 is So then you know, you know, uh, the pandemic thing is, is this is interesting. Uh, you might look at, uh, uh, you know, the confirmed cases and other cases, but when it comes to uh, uh, real data, uh, you can see uh, Maldives uh, population-wise has, has really been uh, affected. Whereas some other countries uh, are pretty good. Uh, Bhutan is, is zero. Uh, Myanmar is 0 0.1. Sri Lanka 0 0.5. Thailand 0 0.8. I think, uh, uh, I must say, Thailand has done extraordinary, uh, you know, given that they also have a uh, huge population and, uh, you know, the number of tourists uh, with China is, is huge. Uh, from that point of view, uh, I guess Thailand has done pretty, uh, pretty well. So this is the scenario when it comes to uh, COVID-19. Now, it's not really bad compared to some of the developed countries. Uh, if you look at the USA, now uh, my data is a little bit old. It, it's now higher. Uh, there per 1 million is uh, 425. Uh, now it's uh, a little bit higher than 425. Uh, uh, Brazil is uh, 354. Uh, again, Brazil has gone up. Uh, but look at Belgium. Belgium has uh, nearly 800 uh, people uh, dead uh, per 1 million. Uh, so if you look at uh, even Germany uh, per 1 million is high. If you look at all those uh, you know, death figures and bring it to uh, 1 million, uh, then you understand uh, you know, uh, that the West uh, really uh, is having a, a hard time uh, when it comes to uh, managing uh, the pandemic. And, and there can be, you know, uh, arguments, uh, you know, uh, why, why that is so. Uh, my, my simple, uh, uh, you know, answer would be that uh, I don't think they took seriously when news were flowing in from, you know, uh, late December and early January, uh, you know, the West uh, thought uh, it's just uh, another flu. Now, so we have an idea of, the, of uh, what this region, uh, how, in which direction they're going. If you look at the life expectancy, they're doing pretty well. And then comes the pandemic. Well, it's, it's bad in, in some ways, but then it's not that bad. If you look at the casualty, uh, so far uh, they have managed. Uh, and, and, and it's not like that uh, governments have managed or, or people have managed. I think it's, it's more to do with uh, you know, the mutation uh, of the virus, uh, maybe the humidity, uh, uh, and it also, people talk about the immunity, you know, uh, uh, South Asians were used to eating so many things uh, that, uh, you know, 
uh, we can we can survive uh, and and this has has been shown and a lot of people are now revisiting public health revisiting immunity uh, and, and to see uh, why uh, some people are getting the virus but not uh, you know not collapsing uh, in mind and then we come to the regional security environment now when we talk to the regional security environment uh, uh, the three, uh, uh, you know, uh, three components. Uh, one would be the state, uh, you know, uh, on the on the left, all the states, uh, and then you have the non-state. Don't forget, uh, it's huge, and and, and there are all kinds of non-state. Uh, but the, we, if you talk only on the minis, and Abdul Awal has talked about the piracy a little bit, uh, so uh, that equally is, is very important. And of course, uh, you have the stateless. So you have the state, non-state, and stateless all. Uh, impacting upon the regional security environment. Now, look at the state one. Well, the China-India conflict, and I found this particular uh, cartoon uh, 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 very interesting, uh, given the fact that somebody uh, on the sideline, and I and we don't have to say who is this, you know, somebody uh, is trying to encourage uh, both uh, the panda and elephant uh, to fight. Now, why the panda and elephant would be uh, fighting at this stage? Uh, you know, there are different theories and I've, I've, I've written uh, and also gave interviews on this. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar, but from the, you know, if you look at India's case, uh, a lot of people think that um, domestic compulsions were there. Uh, the economy was really doing bad. Uh, you know, if you are familiar with Obhijit Banerjee's uh, statements and all, uh, even before pandemic, uh, in, long before pandemic, actually, there were uh, really doing bad. The eight percent economy, eight percent growth came down uh, to five uh, percent, and still it was not recovering. Uh, and then the abrogation of the special status of Kashmir. Uh, now, when you do that, uh, you know that you are inviting problems uh, with China because uh, uh, you have this uh, problem with the Galwan Valley, uh, and and the, any abrogation of Kashmir status would invite uh, uh, China. And then. Uh, you have the pandemic, uh, which uh, I think uh, uh, the BJP government uh, just followed uh, followed uh, Donald Trump, uh, and, and we know the special relationship that Narendra Modi uh, has with uh, Donald Trump, and I think he literally believed what Trump was saying. And so, uh, the two months that India had, or two, uh, you know, or, or, or South Asian countries had, somehow uh, they did not uh, take seriously. And I say this, uh, you know, uh, with with. Uh, you know, uh, with quite, uh, uh, I guess, uh, a little bit of research, because if you, if you take Vietnam, uh, if Vietnam can do what it has done, uh, I see no reason why other countries uh, could not have done what Vietnam has done. done. Uh, Vietnam took it very seriously, uh, and, and, and look uh, how, how well uh, they have managed. So uh, that it can't be managed, that it can't be managed, I don't think uh, that's the right way of looking at it. Now, China probably also had some compulsion because uh, the economy uh, slowed down. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is the best opportunity to show uh, some power. And I guess uh, Galwan Valley, uh, it was easy. Now, <clears throat> Galwan Valley, uh, keep in mind, uh, no shots were fired. Uh, both of them, uh, you know, kept their munitions out. And they literally died... Uh, of what is known as the fourth wall war, you know, died uh, boxing or, or hitting with stones. Uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, incredible, uh, the restraint. Uh, but still, even with that restraint, uh, at least we know how many Indian soldiers died, uh, 20, which is really sad. Uh, and and it, this tells you also that uh, post-pandemic uh, time is not going to change so much. Uh, and, and, and you can, you know, you can see this historically because when we had the so-called Spanish flu uh, at the end of the First World War, uh, still we had the Second World War, where more people died actually uh, than uh, First World War. So the point here is, uh, uh, if you tell me, uh, I don't think the world is going to change uh, completely. Uh, the moment the vaccine comes out, believe it or not, everybody will be dancing on the streets and, uh, and uh, people will go back uh, to uh, whatever they were uh, doing. Uh, it's very difficult to change humans. There will be some changes in the public health. Maybe you probably will be washing your hands uh, more frequently. Uh, the mask uh, probably would remain for some time and maybe part of your dress. Uh, but, you know, uh, 
uh, other things, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the hatred, uh, the machoism, you know, all those things uh, uh, will return and, and China in a conflict uh, at the Galwan Valley, at the, at, you know, when India was having really spike uh, of the virus, tells you uh, it's not going to uh, change uh, so much. Uh, now let's look at the uh, uh, global terrorism index. Now here too, uh, you know, the region is not doing that bad. Well, uh, uh, in the first 10, we only have one country, uh, uh, that is India, uh, number seven. Uh, but the rest of the countries is, 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 uh, is quite below. I kept uh, USA because USA is, 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 is 22 now. Uh, in fact, uh, more uh, uh, terrorism than, than Bangladesh, but somehow Bangladesh, uh, I don't know, uh, our evidence and image, they don't, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they don't go together. And so we, we have a bad image, but uh, otherwise we are doing pretty well. Uh, and, and if you compare with India, we are really uh, doing pretty well uh, when it comes to uh, containing and, and preventing terrorism. But this is uh, one... Uh, you know, one uh, kind of uh, security uh, uh, that you can't really, uh, you know, uh, let you lead off because you never know uh, even a person or two uh, can uh, bring you up. And you will see that when 2020 ranking would come, Sri Lanka, which was 55, will really shoot up because, uh, as you know, they had a hard time uh, recently. Uh, we have the piracy uh, at the non-state, and I, I don't want to... Uh, go into that. Uh, Admiral Awal has talked about it, but this is a, a funny cartoon I, I found. It's, it's an interesting kind of a negotiation. All, you know, all countries are negotiating uh, with the pirates that, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, has a fantastic sense of humor. Now, the one that I want to focus a little bit is on the Rohingyas, uh, the stateless. So uh, we have uh, the state, uh, the non-state, and, and now the stateless and this time the matter is different because in the region, uh, again, we have in the 21st century a genocide. That's the problem. The problem is not like it's any other uh, conflict. Uh, you know, uh, Myanmar is full of conflict, as you know. Uh, but uh, the point here is uh, this time uh, the, there is credible evidence uh, that they had uh, genocide. Now, uh, Azim's uh, Ibrahim uh, book is actually uh, pre uh, uh, pre-August 2017 genocide, and, and he almost predicted that, uh, the, you know, uh, what was coming, uh, because uh, the uh, Myanmar government, you know, they have been with this hidden, or, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, 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 yeah, this hidden genocide uh, against Rohingyas uh, and some other ethnic communities uh, almost uh, since 1948 and definitely after 1962. Uh, these are uh, some of the areas, uh, the, the satellite uh, uh, imagery, where uh, one could see the burning of the villages and all. And, uh, and this uh, map will tell you uh, the displacement uh, of the ethnic communities, uh, the non-Burmans. And, and then it, it, and it gives all the figures. So it tells you uh, that uh, you know, the whole of Myanmar has, has always been uh, very uh, conflict-ridden. And, and, and Rohingya uh, is, is one of the big ones. Now, when it comes to Rohingya, keep in mind that uh, uh, we have uh, in, uh, from uh, August 2017, in three months, uh, we have a population inside Bangladesh bigger than Bhutan. Now, Bhutan uh, is you know, part of Bay of Bengal as, as, as a hinterland. Uh, one can see that uh, uh, how Bangladesh, uh, again, is faced with another genocide. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, you know, as you know, uh, we face two genocide. Uh, uh, some of us in our in our lifetime, well, uh, not myself, but I'm sure uh, uh, some of you who are sitting. Uh, 1947 was a genocidal partition, uh, and then we have 1971, uh, which uh, I, I witnessed uh, uh, as a class nine student. Uh, but then uh, we again uh, we are faced with another. Though this time we are not part of it, but uh, we are suffering for from it. And, and this is uh, the, the Rohingya uh, genocide. So we have a region where you have a genocide. This you need to keep in mind. And, and, and when the pandemic goes over, uh, it is going to come in a bigger way. Uh, and the reason uh, it will come in a bigger way, it is already has, has made uh, headlines uh, because uh, you know, of all the countries in the world, uh, Gambia, a small country in Africa, uh, puts up a case and then ICJ had to give 
uh, uh, you know, have to uh, have to give a verdict on the provisional measures that were uh, requested. Now, the interesting part of the provisional measures, two interesting part. One is uh, the ICJ recognizes uh, uh, Rohingyas as Rohingyas, and they've used uh, the word Rohingya. This is the first time uh, the Rohingyas, uh, you know, at, at a legal, internationally legal document, they, they get a uh, recognition. And not to mention, uh, the entire verdict was unanimous. Uh, you had uh, judges from uh, Ch China, from Russia, from India, from Myanmar, in all those countries, uh, but they all agreed uh, to provisional measures. And if you, if you look at it, uh, it, it's a clear case uh, that, uh, you know, something has gone wrong. And so we have to wait uh, for the final verdict. But uh, as of now, uh, since they have recognized uh, uh, the Rohingyas, uh, I think that's a major victory for the Rohingyas. Now, very quickly, uh, uh, two more slides. Sorry, three more slides. Uh, this is where Myanmar's excuse for no repatriation of the Rohingyas. Uh, one of the arguments they give is the, that, uh, you know, the Arakan region is, uh, you know, conflict ridden and we can't bring the Rohingyas. And so are uh, other places. You know, look at the, uh, this side and you will see uh, the whole of Myanmar is conflict ridden. They're fighting everywhere. They're fighting with the Shans, they're fighting with the Chins, with, they're fighting with the Karens, and some of them are genocidal, uh, even there. Somehow Myanmar, uh, you know, uh, is getting off the hook, and, and one should uh, look into that very seriously. Uh, and, and I guess uh, Myanmar has managed three countries very well. They managed, of course, China, they managed Japan, and they managed India. And then uh, the West wants to do business. And then and that, I think, has advantage. Uh, so my argument here, if you have so many problems, if Arakan is so, may, uh, so much conflict-ridden, and since you are saying that that's the reason we can't take back uh, the Rohingyas, because they are committed to take back uh, uh, the Rohingyas, uh, they, you know, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi say the same thing uh, at the ICJ, uh, uh, the, the agreements that uh, uh, we have with uh, Myanmar also, would say that, and also the agreement that Myanmar had with, with UNICEF would say the same thing. So my argument is that if that is the case, then let's go for a safe zone uh, in the Arakan with peacekeeping forces from ASEAN countries, China, India, even Japan, you know, all our friendly countries. Uh, and, and this is part of the Bay of Bengal uh, uh, as well, well, save Japan. But, uh, you know, you just can't keep on saying that I can't take them back uh, because uh, there is fighting going on. You know, the whole of, you know, if you look at all the borders uh, of, of um, uh, Myanmar, uh, you know, the slide that I wanted to show earlier, yeah, uh, you can see they're, you know, uh, conflict ridden uh, everywhere. So that can't be the argument. If you can't handle uh, security, then let's go for a safe zone, uh, as Bangladesh has proposed, and let's go for peacekeeping forces. Well, doesn't have to be UN. It can be from friendly countries. Now, the last two slides, okay, fine. This is going to remain in the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, post-pandemic. But let's, let's see, you know, uh, uh, what are the other things, uh, you know, the Bay of Bengal region can do. And, and this is both Sun Tzu and, and Albert Einstein uh, almost say the same thing, that in, in the midst of uh, every crisis lies a great uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, and, and, and this is something that uh, we need to uh, really focus on. Uh, if you go back to COVID-19 figures, you'll see uh, that we are, relatively speaking, uh, not that bad, uh, but we, we need to you know, think out of the box and, and be smart and, and, and see uh, how best we can take the opportunity. My argument here, again, would be uh, to look into Bangladesh and, and, and see what we have done uh, before pandemic, Bangladesh is one of the rare countries where we, uh, where you have growth without enmity. We literally don't have enemies. Uh, this is something that I flagged in, in different papers, and I'm sure some of you are familiar. Uh, you know, uh, other countries want us to be enemies, but we do. But you know, we simply say, we you know, we don't have enemies, and and we have a you know, fantastic principle: friends towards all, malice towards none, and that was uh, recorded way uh, even during the nine months. Uh, 71 war, and it uh, followed, uh, the principle still continues. And we have made the best of it. And look at it, you know, uh, we are in the Sark, we are in the Bimstek, 
we are in the BBIN, uh, but then we are in One Belt, One Road, and not to mention we are in the One Belt, One Road, but at the same time, we are also in this big, uh, you know, Indo-Pacific strategy. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we have to, some people can say that it's, it, it's an opportunity. My argument is, no, it's not. It, it has a civilizational context. Bengal has always been, you know, receiving people, you know. Uh, Bengal has a fantastic, it's a very old civilization. The country may be 1971, but, but our civilization goes back, you know, over 5,000 to 7,000 years. People forget, uh, you know, people have forgotten Lichavi dynasty, which was a Republican a dynasty way back in the 6th century BC. Uh, you know, we have forgotten all those things. But the point here is the civilizational context remains. And I think growth with enmity is something that the post-pandemic time, I think uh, we can make good use of. So there's no point in siding with one or the other. Uh, we continue as we have continued so far and, 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 and keep, uh, you know, uh, what you call uh, investing uh, on, 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 on the humans, uh, on, on the big population that we have. The final one uh, is, 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 is something, and, and this, uh, this is Mandola and, and uh, the Mandola system, and, and, and I go back to Chanakko uh, uh, Patilla uh, to give you a sense that, uh, you know, how uh, Bengal can actually uh, practice uh, the, 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 you know, kind of security that, that you need and the kind of strength uh, that can, you can build. Uh, you need to, you know, uh, 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 keep the political ring, the economic ring, the social, the cultural, the technological, and also the psychological. Uh, you can't leave one or the other. Uh, you, you need to, you know, harmonize all this. It's, it's, it's quite complex, and, and, that was, uh, and that is what uh, Prasungika, uh, the, the, the South Asian or the Indian dialectics is, is all about. And, and this complexity is, is required, uh, uh, I think, more uh, in the post-pandemic uh, period. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Imtiaz Ahmed, sir. It's a well expounded uh, your issue with uh, replete, repleted with lots of uh, citation and uh, information. Uh, well, we had been listening, um, uh, Dr. Antiyaz, regarding the security, uh, and uh, we listened uh, first is the geopolitics, and then we had now some idea about the security situation, and let's converge towards most important for Bangladesh is the geoeconomics after the pandemic. I will request Dr. Ab Aftab Ahmed Khan. Sir, Dr. Aftab Ahmed Khan. Uh, Sir, we are very late. I will request you to uh, quick as much as possible. Rashid, you have to uh, uh, stop sharing and then he can come. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Aftab Alam Khan, not Aftab Ahmed Khan. Uh, Sorry, sir. It's all right. Uh, Admiral Awal and uh, Professor Imtiaz so far has talked about uh, the uh, aspects and the political aspects of the, the Bengal region. And I have been I have been given uh, talk about the economical aspect, geoeconomic. And all the three talks have been uh, related to the COVID-19 crisis. With due respect uh, to all the thematic uh, areas, I personally do not see any link of the COVID-19 crisis with all this geopolitics and geostrategy strategy and geoeconomics. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank Dimbrad giving me an opportunity to talk about uh, in esteemed gathering uh, talk will be on the evolving geoeconomic dimension. So evolving geoeconomic dimension 
uh, during COVID-19 pandemic and uh, implications for Bay Bengal literals and provinces for Bangladesh. Uh, as I said that uh, geoeconomic uh, status and the geosecurity status of the Bay Bengal is a long, long um, uh, 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 for problem which is coming um, uh, for much, much before of COVID-19. So uh, the way all the three aspects are uh, moving on uh, in, the, in, in, in our uh, arena, uh, the same way it will be, uh, it will be um, uh, in post-COVID-19. So in terms of geoeconomy, I, I, I would uh, like to show uh, one, uh, can you share my, my, Mr. Rashid, please? Can you see everybody? Uh, no, sir, sir. Upnard, uh, you have to go to your screen among Nietzsche at the bottom. The can sir, share a screen. Uh, please uh, click okay, share okay, a screen. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, sure. Share a screen. Uh, now I have a screen. And then on the right side. Yeah, yeah sure. it's all right. It's all right. Can you see now? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah okay. Now. So uh, now this slide uh, <clears throat> explains that the, the our Bay of Bengal is how much rich the Bay of Bengal is uh, from all kind of um, um, uh, uh, for, from, from everything. Now, as as we have my, my, my two my previous uh, uh, speakers. speakers, they have uh, told about the Bay of Bengal and um, uh, link, linking the Indian Ocean and Indian Ocean um, uh, as they have described, is a uh, very rich economically and politically and strategically. Uh, it's a very rich um, um, domain. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Bay of Bengal is directly linked to the Indian Ocean, and uh, the economic aspects of the Bay of Bengal, you can see that this Bay of Bengal is uh, has formed uh, hardly back in 130 million years so before uh, 30 130 million years the bay of bengal was not there indian ocean also not there so this indian uh, entire indian subcontinent indian plate this is the lo um, located in the far south with the antarctica then this western basin initially is formed and where Lots of um, economic, um, uh, geoeconomicism, uh, um, uh, I mean, enrichment has progressed. Now, today we we have um, uh, seen that the Bay of Bengal is uh, very much, uh, and I mean, very much uh, rich from oil point of view, gas point of view, gas hydrate point of view, minerals point of view, all these things, and also. Uh, your ecological um, and biodiversity and natural resources are there. Now, how to how to deal with the present uh, Bay Bengali status with the geopolitical and geoeconomical situation? So, I would I would, I would say that this global economy. Uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic has greatly been shattered, affecting every aspect of life. That's true. Mm -hmm. Developing the most uh, densely populated... Uh, uh, just a minute, please. So, uh, developing the, and the most densely populated country like Bangladesh is not an exception. COVID-19 crisis has brought all the economic activities to a standstill. The government is working hard to keep rolling the economy of the country to maintain its GDP growth, along with fighting to overcome present crisis. But very fast increasing of unemployment rate, increasing percentage of poverty level, and the overall damaging psychological conditions of people due to COVID-19 pandemic are in the forefront of all the challenges. Evolving geoeconomic dimension in Bangladesh may not necessarily directly related to the existing COVID-19 pandemic, but 
certainly has imposed natural halt to our economic activities. Although COVID-19 pandemic is natural, the changing geoeconomic condition is the outcome of long spell of flawed um, uh, and corrupted socioeconomic activities, governance, and practices. However, all and corrupt uh, all activities pertaining to the maritime sector with good governance and practices may contribute to the recovery from all the present negative scenario of our socioeconomic condition. Activities relating to the development of blue economy may supplement to overcome these adverse impacts. There is no single definition of blue economy. Practical ocean-based economy activities and uh, proactive institutional arrangements for protecting ocean and coast can enhance the sustainability of blue economy. Threats to ocean, threats to ocean environment and ecosystem, destruction to habitats, pollution, impacts of climate change and ocean-related hazards need to address by evolving by, by develop, developing our own capacity building. Although climate change is a highly controversial issue, we need to determine its reality, cause and effects in the Bay of Bengal littorals. Climate change is an idea that propagates in the domains of poli politics and diplomacy. It is an idea to mobilize forces in the fields of business in the name of renewable energy source, law in the name of imposing climate tax, and trade in the name of exploitation. At the end of the day, this cannot simply improve human well-being, but through reducing environmental risk, ecological uh, scarcities, good governance, honesty, and own participation, certainly a better horizon would evolve. The implication of evolving geoeconomic dimension during present COVID-19 pandemic for Bay Bengal literals, however, demands new normal models wherein new normal models of economic development should be based upon four basic realizations. Number one, the oceans are indeed the source of all life on earth. Number two, any further degradation of the environment and or ecological damage is unaffordable. Number three, Sustainable exploration and exploitation of resources, both geological and natural, are absolutely necessary for the long-term survival. Number four, good governance, safety, and security in all maritime sectors are the fundamental requirements that need to be ensured and implemented. Blue governance is a holistic and multidisciplinary approach facilitating the decision-making structures and processes for sustainable development of aquatic resources. It is an ideal approach to develop policies, bridging land and sea systems to improve the governance of deltas. In addition, blue economy is of particular importance to the littoral states of the Bay of Bengal. Many times related all economic activities for the sustainability of blue economy must not be mixed up and hindered by COVID-19 crisis only. Development of geoeconomic condition requires multidimensional commitments, of which the most important is to develop our own educated resource persons who can take all the responsibilities in the maritime sector to bring success and progress. We cannot afford to depend on unprofessional workforce to safeguard such a vast marine resources and its civilization. Along with the geoeconomic dimension, evolving geopolitical power politics in the Indian Ocean, due not only to COVID-19 crisis, likely to have direct bearing on us since the Bay of Bengal is recognized as the gateway to facilitate trade and culture exchange between Africa, Asia, and Middle East. However, the main players mm -hmm. in the region those who demonstrate conflicting relationship in terms of dominance in the Bay of Bengal should bear in mind that holistic maritime security would not progress in the context of climate change. Climate is not changing in the scope of its definition. The minuscule earth 
immersed in the solar sphere of influence cannot simply escape its impact. The question of maritime security in the Bay of Bengal would also arise from its potentiality of geological and natural resources. Harnessing and protecting these geological and natural resources will contribute to the development of sustainable blue economy. Safety and security of the Bay of Bengal is intrinsically related to the development of transregional integrated model of friendship, trust, and honesty. The question of safety and security in the Bay of Bengal, we need to develop cooperation with all the littoral countries under the framework of friendship, trust, and honesty with zero dominating and exploitation mentality in order to achieve sustainable development of blue economy in the region. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Atab Alam, sir, for your uh, speech on the geoeconomics. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, participants and participants, uh, we have heard our learned three speakers um, on the theme and the respected uh, subject uh, area, the geopolitics, security scenario, and the uh, geo economics. I will uh, now, uh, is, the, uh, is, the, is the open for question and answer session. Uh, I will, mainly I will request you to send your question through uh, uh, the chat box group. Uh, I can see some of them have thrown the question and still if you want to send uh, some question, please uh, do so. Um, First, the uh, NDC from NDC, Colonel GS NDC, Chinese uh, foothold uh, in Hamban at the same time, Indians involvement in Kaladan multimodal project warrant a substantial display of flexing power by the concerned states. This will not only make the region unstable, but also NTS threat will also be increased manifold. Do you agree the statement? If so, um, if yes, uh, uh, then what would be the role of uh, littoral, especially Bangladesh to ensure stability in the region and what about their strategy during or after pandemic COVID-19? Uh, Sanju says, tactics uh, without strategy is the noise before defeat. Mainly it covers the security. I will request uh, Dr. Imtiaz Ahmesar to respond uh, if, you, uh, if you want to. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I see a, a question from uh... Uh, Commandant uh, BNA, um, uh, what will happen if India-China uh, situation gets worse? Uh, uh, my on that is that I don't think it's going to uh, get worse. I think uh, whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, the strategy was, uh, and I, I still think that uh, uh, it had to do with domestic compulsion. Uh, as I pointed out, it had to do uh, with, uh, uh, in, 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 in many sense, uh, uh, the domestic uh, problems uh, that uh, uh, BGP government uh, is facing, and not to mention, uh, more importantly, uh, the abrogation of the spatial status uh, of uh, Kashmir. So what has happened is, uh, uh, you know, line of actual control uh, now has become line of actual border. You know, I made this uh, kind of a <laughs> funny way of putting it, uh, because somehow you, you have to uh, fix that. So I think India by now knows uh, very well uh, uh, how much uh, China uh, would be interested in because uh, there were disputed places uh, and uh, now it's, uh, you know, wherever they are would be regarded as line of uh, actual uh, border. Uh, keep in mind, as I said, uh, no arms ammunition were uh, used. So they, both sides showed a tremendous restraint. Um, at the same time, uh, also, uh, you know, um, also keep in mind that uh, uh, it, uh, you know, when uh, Narendra Modi gave, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I think it was a conference of 20 political parties, uh, he made it very clear that uh, no posts were taken, uh, you know, and which uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi pointed out that if that is the case, then, who, you know, uh, then uh, is it the case that the Indian troops were in China's, China's land? You know, what was going on? 
So that uh, tells you very clearly that uh, both sides will restrain and there's no reason to, uh, to do that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the hyper-nationalism uh, that you see in, in, uh, uh, in India is what uh, Narendra Modi wanted because uh, it was really going down uh, and it would have uh, impacted upon uh, several uh, state elections uh, that are coming up. Uh, though the major election is, is way back, but uh, the state elections are coming back. And somehow he, 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 he needed this. And I would not rule out uh, somehow, uh, and this is the reason why the cartoon uh, with, uh, you know, with someone sideline, you know, uh, trying to say fight, 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 uh, tells you that uh, in many ways, uh, it's also helping, uh, help, helping Donald Trump uh, win the next election because here is Trump also fanning uh, anti-China and, and he needs, uh, you know, important uh, players to say the same thing. Uh, for his domestic politics. Now, this is something that has happened uh, with uh, with U.S. election even before. Uh, you know, uh, well, last time it was uh, Russia helping uh, uh, Donald Trump, and, and yes, this time uh, he he needs more more hands. Uh, uh, given that pandemic is really uh, hitting him, and now I'm sure you have heard that yesterday again uh, the death figure is 1,000 per day. Uh, it, it has gone up in the United States. Uh, you know, it's a terrible mess. Uh, you know, there's no reason. It's only that it's a big power. It can handle it. If it, ha if it had happened in any other country, they would have said uh, the state is lost, you know, with, with, with 1,000 dead per day. Uh, it, it is unacceptable. So my point here is, uh, even with India's pandemic, you can see uh, whatever the strategy was, it has succeeded. So it's not going to uh, uh, go bad. I don't think it serves uh, the interest and the economy. Uh, of, of India can't uh, handle uh, a, a big fight, you know, uh, um, and I don't think we have to, you know, get uh, uh, into uh, the details. Very, very quickly on the second question on the, on the non-traditional uh, threat. Uh, no, I think uh, I will argue the opposite in the sense that, um, you know, uh, if you are investing somewhere, and this is where I always point out to uh, our officials uh, that you, you need to brief uh, China Telling the look, if you're interested in uh, investing in the Arakan uh, and in Myanmar and getting all these things done, you you need to you know somehow uh, stop uh, this uh, what you call at least uh, solve the problem uh, with the uh, uh, in the Arakan. You can't have a, a genocidal issue uh, and one point or more than uh, 1.1 million people uh, you know uh, outside uh, uh, Arakan. Not to mention there are 19 countries where you have Rohingyas. It's not only Bangladesh who has Rohingyas. Bangladesh has the largest number, but there are Rohingyas in India, there are Rohingyas in Saudi Arabia, in Pakistan, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Japan, and I can go on and on. There are 19 countries. So the point here is you have created this enormous diaspora, Rohingya diaspora, and then you want to invest in that particular region. It's, it's you know, you, you can't do it. Your investment uh, uh, will suffer. And I think the Chinese, know very well, uh, you know, uh, uh, on one-to-one, -one, they always say that uh, we understand. And I will not rule out the fact uh, that the whole issue of Arakan army, and, and I'm sure some of you are familiar uh, with Arakan army's relationship uh, with, with, uh, with uh, uh, and all, you know, uh, I think they're using other cards uh, to put pressure on Myanmar because, uh, you know, privately, they will always say that, look, uh, uh, they, they are not listening to whatever we are saying. But at the same time, China would not want uh, India or Japan or other countries, you know, uh, uh, take uh, uh, Myanmar to their side to the point that it becomes uh, hostile. Keep in mind that, you know, I, I don't know whether Admiral Awal talked about this, but, you know, there are more than 150 bases, American bases surrounding China. It, 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 you know, that's, that's a fact, you know, and then. And you can easily see that they would not allow uh, Myanmar uh, to be uh, on that spot. So I, my argument would be if there are investments, uh, business people know very well that, you know, if you want to make uh, industrial investment, uh, not commercial investment. You see, if you have a conflict then commercial investment, uh, you can actually, uh, you can gain. Uh, you can have a war economy and you can gain. Uh, but if you have, if you want to put an install, you know, install, installations, if you want to put uh, 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 infrastructure development, you need stability. And, and, and I see uh, non-traditional threat would be uh, something uh, that would go against them.
Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir. I will uh, request uh, Admiral uh, Awal sir to respond uh, how Bangladesh is uh, utilizing ocean resources with a view to environmental sustainability following the settlement of its maritime uh, territory. And uh, also he has asked the China and uh, India uh, they have ventured military exercise in the South China Sea and as uh, because the Bangladesh is fully dependent on the maritime trade and communication. Uh, so how it is gonna affect uh, to our uh, trade uh, uh, development between India and China while USA will tend to support India. Uh, Admiral Lawal, sir. Yeah, can, can you please repeat the uh, last part of your uh... Question? Sir, uh, the, the first one is the uh, environmental sustainability following the settlement of its maritime territory. Yeah. That's the first one. And the uh, first one is, uh, is uh, <coughs> Shamsur Rahman Khanum, everyone. Shams, Shamsur Nahar Khanum. Okay, and then the, the second one, I said the US and India, uh, they have ventured military exercise in South China that might spread over the region, including Bay of Bengal. Bangladesh being fully dependent on maritime trade and communication through this region. Do you foresee any, uh, uh, it, it will be thereby any impact over the trade due to the recent development between India and China with USA will tend to support India. So will okay, there be you. any impact on our trade uh, communication in Bay of Bengal. Right. <clears throat> I'll, I'll come with the second one first. Uh, the impact on our trade, uh, it will not be Bangladesh specific. It will be impacted uh, for the entire uh, Indian Ocean uh, region, whoever is using the, the sea lines of communication of the Indian uh, uh, Ocean area. Now, uh, the the thing that uh, has happening in uh, Pacific, <clears throat> as I said, that the geopolitical uh, rivalry in the Pacific is very pronounced uh, between the US and allies and uh, China, because China has the capability there. Uh, and China has the compulsion that it has to get its uh, products to its destination countries at the moment through the sea lines of communication of the South China Sea and then coming uh, through the Indian Ocean. That's why it is so desperate to have an alternative of the land communication uh, through the China-Pakistan uh, 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 Pakistan economic corridor, uh, linking the uh, you know, Central Asia with that uh, and coming to the Gwadar port and coming to the Indian Ocean. And then uh, this side, <clears throat> it wants to avoid, uh, has an alternative to the South China Sea uh, coming to, uh, to Myanmar, a key of two port uh, through uh, China-Myanmar economic uh, corridor. So this is a, a desperate attempt because it is a necessity so that it is not uh, strangled uh, in its uh, sea lines of communication. Now, uh, whatever is uh, happening uh, there, uh, the question uh, is to be asked, that if you disrupt uh, the you know, sea lines of communication, uh, that will be disastrous for the global economy. Uh, uh, you have seen the development uh, here for the first time uh, when the oil price went negative uh, during the uh, early phase of the COVID-19. And because of the uh, you know, oil war between uh, Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia, and to some extent with the USA. So at that time, the oil tankers were flowing and they didn't know where to go. The sea lines of communication was open. That was the time it came that actually this concept of protecting the sea lines of communication, uh, how uh, uh, effective it is. But as has been mentioned, that COVID-19 is a temporary phenomenon. The moment it is over, will be back to square one. So again, these uh, uh, geopolitical issues uh, uh, will be uh, coming. But the uh, point is, uh, uh, for the Persian uh, Gulf, there's a new scenario there uh, because of the uh, you know, reshaping of the security construct. Uh, and 
the partial withdrawal from Syria, uh, uh, so, uh, the Iraq, uh, and the Patriot missile from Saudi Arabia, but the central command in Bahrain is uh, there. So how uh, the uh, new scenario will uh, shape up? But one thing has come uh, through the crisis uh, in Persian Gulf through 2019 and early 2000, that it is very difficult to disrupt uh, the flow. Because if you uh, stop the oil flow to the Persian Gulf, it's going to affect the China, India, uh, 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 the uh, South Korea, Japan. These are the uh, major allies of USA. Now, how to stop that one? So that's why uh, coming uh, the disruption of the Bay of Bengal uh, uh, and uh, the Malacca state, there is the vulnerability. Because here you can be selective. If the uh, USA and um, its allies, uh, that's how the, I'll relate to the uh, recent, uh, uh, you know, uh, India and China standoff. Uh, because uh, India cannot really gain anything uh, in the land uh, boundary of the line of actual control uh, places. But what India can play a role as uh, US allies, which India was reluctant to be joining uh, the Indo-Pacific or play a prominent role in the Indo-Pacific strategy or uh, the Quad. Uh, but now it can be drawn uh, here. For China, it has the Malacca uh, dilemma uh, of 80% uh, of its oil shipment going through the Malacca Strait. So there is the vulnerability where the US and allies can be selective uh, with the uh, uh, Chinese oil flow and others. For Bangladesh, uh, uh, the problem is that when uh, the uh, you know the TF2 port uh, comes up, it will take time. If there is a Chinese uh, foothold, the, mil uh, the naval foothold there, uh, then it's going to make the Andaman Nicobar is the springboard for uh, geopolitics in this area. Already there is I uh, mentioned that the USS Nimitz is in the Bay of Bengal now, uh, carrying out uh, uh, exercise with the Indian Navy. Uh, of uh, Andaman uh, Nicobar. So uh, 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 this, uh, the Bay of Bengal area, uh, it will have a, a security uh, ramification uh, in this context when all these players uh, play their geopolitical cards, the India, uh, China, the USA, and Japan is also there. Japan is helping uh, India uh, to develop the facilities in Andaman Nicobar uh, and uh, the, uh, the Quad uh, play, the uh, 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 Australia was out of the scene so far, uh, but it will be joining in a big way now through uh, joining the exercise uh, Malabar, uh, which is conducted uh, by India. So there is a, you know, hitting up of uh, the geopolitical scenario in the uh, Bay of Bengal area, even through the pandemic. Uh, the trade disruption, as I said, that it will not be Bangladesh specific, but any tension, as we are also fully dependent on our export, and import of uh, raw materials. Any disruption is going to uh, play havoc with the regional economy and will be hard hit, uh, that's the thing. And uh, thinking as a, a sailor, what I would say that, uh, you know, uh, as uh, uh, India so far had been reluctant uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be prominently joining, uh, uh, prominently playing its role in Indo-Pacific strategy, or Quad standing against China. That was the situation. But now there's a drift uh, for the India towards Quad and more prominent uh, role in, in the uh, Pacific strategy. Probably China was uh, uh, trying to preempt it uh, with its, uh, 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 you know, um, standoff uh, in the Galwan uh, Valley. Uh, the strategy could be, you know, keep uh, India busy with what is called the five finger strategy of uh, China, of Ladakh, uh, Sikkim, Arunachal, uh, then Nepal, uh, Bhutan, uh, to tremble the fingers time to time. Uh, that will keep the entire Indian army, uh, uh, you know, uh, bogged down here. Then you can have the proxy of Pakistan. If you do that, then the uh, India is totally bogged down, uh, India army and air force is bogged down uh, with this uh, line of actual control uh, a scenario where India can actually play a role in, Bay of Beng uh, in the Indian Ocean area, that China doesn't want. It may be a preemptive mode uh, for uh, China to think. 
uh, about this, uh, you know, sea resources, uh, we have settled our maritime uh, uh, boundary, but we have not been able to accrue the benefit uh, out of it. Uh, the hydrocarbon uh, uh, exploration, uh, we have not made much progress. The multi-client survey, it is dragging and it should be done. Uh, uh, that is one. Uh, then the fishery resources, our uh, uh, attempt is only within 30 to uh, 40 uh, kilometers from the uh, shore. We have not been able to go to the deep sea, which is a huge reservoir or various uh, species of fish in uh, tuna and others. Uh, that has not been uh, done. Uh, so as we develop our blue economy, which Dr. Aptaf has mentioned, we have to see that also it should be a sustainable uh, uh, venture. Uh, so that our blue economy gives benefits uh, to the nation. At the same time, uh, it has its environmental uh, issue uh, taken care of. As we have not been able to do the uh, bidding at sea and uh, get uh, our uh, uh, benefit uh, of exploiting the maritime resources from uh, sea yet. Uh, so this is the time our policy, our uh, awareness should be, uh, you know, uh, the environment uh, focus. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I will, uh, I can see we have a very learned and international quali uh, uh, expertise, uh, Ambassador Tarek Karim with us. Uh, he has sent comments and uh, another one is also comments. So um, we would like to hear from you, uh, uh, Ambassador Tarek Karim, the floor is yours. Uh, we <laughs> want to be benefited from you. Um, uh, Commander Rashid, uh, Tariq Karim started, uh, microphone should be on, mic should be on. We want to be benefited from you. Let's hear from you, sir, two to three minutes, sir. Uh, we are, uh, we have you. very much uh, time. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I actually, because of the shortage of time, I lowered my hand and just pasted my comments. That's because those, I think, uh, I compliment all the three speakers. They've made extremely valid points. And uh, uh, they've done a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of research background into that. Um, I raise this point because only yesterday I was at another webinar where a very important Japanese functionary made the point that Bangladesh now is critically important in this region. Now that is something that we have to grasp and we have to understand why we are important and that's why I flagged that. We are on the brink, brink of a precipice. In this, we need to keep cool heads. We need to keep our geopolitical and geoeconomic relevance intact without losing it. Otherwise, we will be like a nut in the nutcracker. And, and I think that's, that's the reason why we need to we become an example of, an exemplar, actually, of a nation rising like the phoenix from the ashes. And as you can see, we have been pushed back almost 40 years in terms of what our export uh, aspirations are, in terms of uh, our poverty uh, situation, you know, 25% more have been added to the poverty uh, uh, circle. And, and the dangerous thing is most of the new poor are from urban areas. They are not illiterate people. They are not raw farm hands. They are people with some knowledge of the world or the world around them. And, and multiple, beset by multiple challenges to their very existence, what is fulminating within them, one doesn't know. We have to address that immediately. Because otherwise it can became, become the ground for fulminating other contestations pouring in. Uh, I completely I'm, I'm support the uh, suggestion made by Professor Aftab Khan. We need to develop closer relations with our Bay of Bengal uh, uh, neighbors, all the literal neighbors. At the moment, Bimstek is it's, it's incomplete. The Bay of Bengal is flanked on the eastern, uh, southeastern side by Indonesia and Malaysia, and on the southwestern side by Sri Lanka. And by extension, Singapore become important and Nepal and Bhutan are important. Bangladesh was central to world global economic development way back 
many centuries ago, even during the time of the British colonial rule. And that is something which we lost because we, we, we split apart our, our, our ecological system, which was integrated. We harvested our wealth from that united, integrated ecological system, which also became an integrated economic system. Our relevance comes because we are the gateway to the Bay of Bengal, and the Bay of Bengal is the gateway from the west to the east. And I think that is where our relevance is, which we have to play that to the hilt. We, only then we can continue to remain intact and prosper. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Tariq Karim. It's been uh, very informative. And uh, I'll respond, uh, Aftab Alum Kansar. Uh, you made a comment uh, regarding the SAC BCN, CBBN. You can uh, pass your comment and also a question uh, for you, sir. Uh, the great power rivalry, the scope for small powers to hedge becomes lesser and lesser. How do you analyze? that even under such intensification of rivalry, Bangladesh can maintain its hedging behaviors? Well, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first, uh, time is short. <laughs> okay. Sorry? Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, time is short, sir. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first, I uh, would like to go with um, uh, our uh, respected ambassador, uh, Tariq Karim, sir, uh, uh, who very categorically uh, 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 mentioned that uh, we need to develop our own um, uh, uh, module, mo in fact, model of friendship um, uh, in our littoral region, with the littoral region. And the question of your, your this um, uh, uh, great power and small power, this particular, um, um, I mean, uh, uh, question uh, should not arise here because all of us, we know very clearly that um, uh, everything, um, I mean, the geoeconomic and geopolitical and geostrategic, uh, all these aspects are um, uh, going on for a long time in the, in the various region of the world. I mean, just to have the power and just to have the dominancy, just to um, exploit the um, um, uh, um, uh, certain um, uh, people and certain region. So uh, the question of your um, um, big power or small power uh, uh, doesn't arise here, and I'm I'm not in a position to uh, comment on that. But uh, uh, in bottom line is that in order to have our uh, uh, sustainable uh, economic um, uh, in the in, in, in Bangladesh, from the Bay of Bengal, from the uh, from the Bay of Bengal region, that we must uh, develop the mechanism by which we can harness the um, the most uh, resources of the Bay of Bengal uh, under the framework of the law of the sea. Now. Uh, 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 your uh, Admiral um, Awal has mentioned about the deployment of the, um, uh, I mean, the carrier, um, uh, 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 I mean, uh, war, 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 war carrier um, in the Bay of Bengal. But um, uh, my question is that, is it within the maritime boundary of Bangladesh? Or it is in the exclusive economic zone. So that we need to know. Because already Bangladesh maritime boundary has been defined. And all the nations in the world, whether it's America or it's China or it's a big power, we must abide by the law of the sea, which is the United Nations law of the sea. So if we if we if we stick to that one, and our maritime boundaries very defined, we we just through the friendship and through the honesty. I repeat, the friendship and the honesty, the all the problems can be solved. Thank you. 
thank you very much, Dr. Aftab Alam Khan. I, I, I draw the attention of our chairman, Admiral uh, Nizam. Uh, we have already overshooted half an hour. Um, still, I can see lots of questions uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, uh, either we can continue or we can go for closing the session. I think, uh, thank you very much. I think we can take last uh, two questions more, then we can conclude. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, sir, I will request uh, first uh, Dr. Uh, Imtiaz and then uh, respond um, Admiral Awal, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Imtiaz, sir, there are some few questions I think you have already seen in the Bay of Bengal region. Can you uh, comparatively analyze Chinese and Indian COVID-19 diplomacy? And then, where is another one? Sir, please respond. Uh, uh, I will, uh, let me have a look uh, with another yeah. one. No, I, uh, thank you. Uh, I've, I've seen the questions actually. Uh, okay. A couple of them, uh, I probably will miss one or two. Um, on the issue of uh, uh, India-China conflict and, and what Bangladesh should uh, do, uh, you know, I, I think I made it very clear that, you know, uh, our position is, is uh, absolutely firm, uh, friendship towards all, malice towards none. Uh, there's no reason for us to, uh, you know, side with uh, one or the other. Uh, the best we can do is uh, tell them to, uh, you know, uh, solve the problem uh, peacefully. Uh, that's all, all we can, all we can uh, say, uh, because it doesn't uh, help uh, India, it doesn't help. China, we are living in a po uh, post-pandemic, uh, you know, we are living in a pandemic uh, time uh, with the uh, you know, number of death and, you know, uh, and infection. Um, uh, I see no reason why uh, uh, the conflict scenario doesn't make uh, any sense. As I said, uh, I, still, I still think uh, domestic compulsions, uh, I think probably, uh, and, and not to mention- uh, Sir, it's a good question, sir. It's a balancing. You mentioned uh, sometimes all the time that the Bangladesh should maintain a balanced relationship. So in the present scenario, what should be the right approach for Bangladesh to maintain balance between India and China, taking into consideration of the strategic importance of Bangladesh to both countries? Please no, well, well, we are not the balancer. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we, are not the, we are not the balancer. And, and we don't want to go into those balance of power kind of, you know, words and on those terminologies because that can bring other problems. Well, we, uh, you know, uh, our friendship will be with all. Uh, and all. Uh, it's a growth without enmity. And, 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 and it's based on our civilizational, you know, uh, what you call the heritage and, and, and the civilizational context. Uh, we are not interested. Uh, it's more important what we do, uh, uh, you know, in the post-pandemic period, given the fact that the chances are that uh, in, in the West, particularly in the US, uh, there will be more racism coming up. Uh, whether Donald Trump wins or loses, I don't think that would be uh, a factor because, uh, you know, the genie is out of the box already uh, in, in, the, in the US. And you have seen how Black Lives Matter, how that has come up. And that's not going to solve uh, just uh, by one election. So there will be more racism. And uh, I think there will be more uh, protectionism that will uh, come up. We can, uh, to uh, be very honest, uh, I think uh, uh, we might benefit uh, out, of, out of that because the American dream uh, can now be translated into Bangladesh dream. You see, everybody was going to American dream. And everybody was thinking, uh, that, you know, uh, we must uh, make uh, our, uh, you know, somehow we must make a base uh, in the U.S. We must study uh, in, in one of the universities and, and, uh, and, and, and literally stay there. You know, studying is not a problem, but, but stay there. But now it looks uh, that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a kind of a system uh, uh, that has gone uh, in, in a direction uh, where uh, racism has come in, 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 in such a way uh, that the chances are uh, the American dream is no longer would be the American dream. It was a dream uh, when you had uh, real growth and when you did not have all these uh, other, you know, uh, economies coming up, whether it is uh, Korea or China, um, including India, you know, these were not there at that stage. So uh, my, my, my point here is uh, we need to look into the opportunities. We need to create Bangladesh in a way where 
uh, the American dream can be transformed into Bangladesh dream so that our best minds can stay uh, in Bangladesh or return to Bangladesh, more importantly. You know, unless they return to Bangladesh, it's, it's a total loss. Now, there was a question, I think this was, uh, uh, Mahfouz was, uh, yeah, Dr. Mahfouz was asking uh, about the peaceful rise uh, of China and, uh, and the aggressive uh, kind of uh, context uh, uh, a lot of people would say. Now, one has to look into rise of great powers uh, historically. If you look at the European powers, uh, their rise was mainly due to colonialism. You know, there was not, nothing exceptional uh, um, other than colonialism. It was colonialism that uh, brought them where they are. And you just need to go to the British Museum to see uh, what they have done. I don't think, you know, uh, I have to go into details uh, to look into what, uh, what Britain was all about. Now, if you look at the US, the rise also had links with neo-colonialism, you know, they were getting cheap, res uh, cheap resources, raw materials from other countries and making what US is all about, not to mention having all the, the best of the minds uh, study uh, in the US and that's how they reproduce. China, on the other hand, actually came up and this is where Deng Xiaoping comes very important. Uh, you know, not so much Mao Zedong, he probably laid the foundation, but it was Deng Xiaoping who created something called capi communism where you blend capitalism and communism and how you do it only the Chinese would know with this yin and yang. So the point here is here you have China where they did not go for colonies, neither did went for neo-colonialism where to get raw materials and all in a cheap way. They literally went for globalization, which is a totally different kind of a system within capitalism itself. So my focus would be, yes, in globalization also, you can end up being at the receiving end and suffering from it, but you need to be smart. And Bangladesh somehow played smartly because we actually benefited from globalization. All that you see is mainly a product of ready-made garments, one, and the remittances that we get uh, from the Middle East and some of other countries, both are part of globalization. So the point here is we made good use of globalization. Let's skip it, but let's start thinking, brainstorming as to what we can do in a much more bigger way, which countries, uh, you know, uh, uh, would be uh, uh, that, you know, uh, uh, would be players uh, who will come up uh, very quickly. And, and this can be actually, if you look at some of the statistics, one can easily find out. But at the bottom at the line, and this I think Ambassador Tarek Karim was uh, saying the same thing, you know, we don't have to take sides. It's not there in our principle, you know, friendship towards all, malice towards none. There's no reason for us to side with this one or that one. We need to be smart. We need to face the situation and not shy away from it, but take the advantage of all, uh, uh, all the countries that we have uh, 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 you know, before us. Uh, finally, uh, there's one, uh, uh, let me also respond uh, to one question, which is, you know, linked uh, to the blue economy uh, and the indigenous capacity and etc. Now, this is important. We talk about blue economy, but our mind is still brown. You know, our mind is not, uh, you know, very land centric mind. <laughs> our mind is not blue. Now, the point is you need to, you know, this is something that you need to bring in the education. And it has, and it, it can't be from the tertiary education. You need to uh, create the blue mind from absolutely from the lower end. And Bangladesh, you know, somehow uh, there's no reason why we should not benefit because our you know, concept of Bangladesh is Nodi Matrik Desh. You know, Nodi Matrik is a blue. We have not used our Nodi Matrik Desh. It is a water country. It's not a land country. It's a, simply a water country. We need to be water centric. We need to get into this uh, 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 water, which is blue in any way, and, and make best of use. But we can't do that with a browned mind. And that's, uh, that's the main point. Our mind is still brown, and this has come from the West in a, in, in a very big way. And we need to deconstruct it. If we can do that, I believe the chances are we will make the best of the in indigenous capacity that we are talking about and the blue economy advantage that we are talking about. I'll stop there.
Okay, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amtiaz Ahmed, sir. Uh, 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 well, uh, last, uh, uh, this is the response from uh, Admir uh, Admiral Awal, sir. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Tanvir Habib uh, uh, mentioned about the uh, uh, USA publisher's strategy paper. Uh, it's a cooperative strategy for 21st century, sea power, which uh, he said shifted from the Mahanian outlook to the uh, Julian Kirby task. And uh, he uh, referred section two of the paper talks about forward base and partnership. How do you think that would impact region, uh, regional relations? And also maybe also you can respond to the Dr. Aftar Alam Khan uh, query about the deployment of USS Nimitz in Bay of Bengal. Uh, sir, be ready. Uh, for that, uh, I was to mention from Dr. MDU, Wasiul Islam uh, has sent a comment to uh, Bimbrad, uh, uh, thanking Bimbrad for arranging this uh, important uh, webinar. And he has also a small suggestions for us. Thank you very much, Dr. MD Wasiul Islam from Khulna University. Sir, read well, all, sir. Yeah. The last uh, uh, re Regarding uh, the comment of uh, Dr. Aftab, <clears throat> what is uh, uh, the point to note here? It is uh, uh, not in the EEZ of uh, any country, rather. It is all of uh, Andaman Nicobar, uh, that is in, the, uh, in a way in Indian uh, water, uh, far away uh, from uh, our uh, EEZ. But uh, the point here is the timing of the exercise with the Indian Navy following the standoff uh, between China and India. That's uh, what uh, it was. Nimitz was, uh, was in the, uh, the Pacific uh, Theater, uh, just con concluded uh, the war game uh, there in the South China Sea. And from there, uh, it has come to the, uh, it was going to, uh, to Middle East, then it has come uh, to the Indian Ocean. So the timing uh, uh, is the thing, and the, the message that is coming out of it is the closer relationship uh, between uh, India uh, and uh, USA uh, and uh, uh, you know its correlation with the Malacca Strait, uh, you know, sea lines of communication. So these these are the geopolitical masses uh, which is coming out of it. Uh, that, that's the issue here. Now uh, about the Admiral Mahan and uh, uh, Corbett, uh, you know, uh, Corbett. Uh, yes, uh, that's a, uh, that's a uh, analogy and outcomes. But uh, as a geopolitical uh, uh, theory, uh, that's uh, Mohan is still the, uh, he holds the uh, intellectual property right uh, because that's the sea power uh, theory he brought in and that is uh, very much applicable uh, in the scenario that is uh, coming now uh, uh, the, uh, the globally. As if you see globally uh, uh, in Europe, uh, the uh, NATO, America, uh, uh, they uh, meet Russia along the border, along the land boundary, uh, also at uh, Black Sea. But in the, when it comes to the Indo-Pacific, it is a maritime uh, scenario. Uh, here you meet uh, uh, at sea, and there the Mahanian concept uh, uh, you know, is there. Uh, but the forward base and other things, that's the corollary of uh, the Mahanian concept also. Uh, that can be uh, taken into consideration. But the point that I want to make is there's a question now the whether uh, the USA and China, are they entering in the new Cold War? The thing is that if you look at the earlier Cold War, the first Cold War, um, or the Cold War uh, that was there, there the, the, it was a war uh, on the ideological and political field. And economically, uh, uh, the Soviet bloc was totally isolated. So that was there. But the, now the rivalry, uh, the geopolitical, economic, and all rivalry, that is in terms of uh, trade, technology, cyberspace, uh, uh, you know, supply chain, all these matters, along with a contingent, huge development of the military capability. So there, there is a hope that as uh, this will be fought in these lines, uh, that the trade technology and others, uh, uh, you will have a lot of noise, but uh, the the uh, the possibility of slipping to conflict uh, could be uh, less. So uh, that's uh, our th uh, thing. I will end with uh, one comment on our position as Bangladesh. 
as has been uh, well explained. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the Bangladesh, whether it does the balancing or not, but the thing is that we will we'll have to act in our national interest between China and India. China is our, uh, our largest trading partner. India is our second largest trading partner. So our national interest is to trade better with them. And what could be a better example of, you call it, you could call it balancing or accommodation, is that uh, you know the Chinese uh, access uh, of uh, 5,161 uh, 5, Bangladeshi goods uh, duty-free access to Chinese market. We have been trying for long, but the announcement was made by China on 16th of June, please note, 16th of June, the day following the uh, you know, uh, Galwan Valley debacle. Uh, that was the 16th June, they found it uh, appropriate to make this announcement. So that was there, it's a big thing, we should take advantage of that uh, in, in exporting our goods. And then yesterday, as per our transshipment agreement with India, India MV Sejuti has come uh, with the uh, containers for transshipment uh, to uh, Tripura. Uh, so this is uh, becoming uh, functional. Uh, so uh, this is, I think, uh, a good act. We should, uh, 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 you know, maximize uh, our, uh, this thing. And other thing, the Bangladesh by birth, by its philosophy, by its uh, foreign policy articulation, and by the declaration of our independence, we want to breach. We, we, had the concept, we uh, brought the concept of SARC, uh, making the strategic space from Afghanistan uh, to uh, uh, this uh, area of Southeast Asia doorstep. A fantastic uh, strategic space and cooperation uh, that Bangladesh uh, has thought. Now we need to breeze to the, Dr. Uh, uh, the Ambassador Tarekan has mentioned about the integration of the Bay of Bengal area, which was traditionally there and we were at the uh, center of that. So that integration has been lost. There's a connection between the uh, ASEAN and the SAR. We need to connect that. And who, who connects that? Uh, the, the bridging will be uh, done by two countries, Bangladesh and Myanmar. We have to fix our relationship with Myanmar and get uh, uh, our access uh, to the ASEAN. So always what we should do to uh, make a strategic space for us so that we can pursue our national interest and we can be a bridge for everybody and a regional cooperation. Thank you. Thank uh, you Mr. very much, sir. Thank you very much, all the speakers. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, we... Mr. Chairman, can I um, add a point um, here? Uh, I'm off top. Yes, sir. You can, uh, uh, okay. okay, last minute. Okay, okay, last minute. Uh, no, uh, I'm, I, I cannot uh, resist my temptation in commenting, uh, hearing the uh, comments made by Admiral Awal and uh, Person Tiaz. Uh, we, we are analyzing the situation. So long, so far we have uh, presented our paper. Uh, we have, we are analyzing the situation, and we are, we are um, uh, proposing something um, which is hypothetical. That may, in terms of friendship, or in terms of um, uh, cooperation, or in terms of these are all proposals. The reality when will come that we don't know. But my very categorical point is that if we, we means we Bangladeshi, need to have our own socio-economic emancipation, then we need to exploit the resources from the Bay of Bengal and from the uh, maritime boundary of the Bay of Bengal. And for that, we need our own expert, own resource persons, own people. Because in the name of cooperation, in the name of uh, my friendship, in the name of uh, my trade agreement, if the players are of two different levels, in the negotiating table, 
there cannot be equal, my, the, the equality will not be maintained. There will be an element of exploitation, supremacy, and that we are facing. Now my humble request, through this webinar, that whatever political situation, whatever economic situation is prevailing in the region, that needs to be solved, no doubt. But please make a mechanism where we should have to develop our or produce our own people, own but people who can exploit and explore and utilize the resources, the vast resources of the Bay of Bengal for our own economic and social emancipation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Atal Balam, sir, for your uh, last and valuable comments. So we will note your comments. In fact, uh, today's uh, discussions, uh, the theme, I believe we all agree, is well expounded, repleted with lots of informations within the shortest possible time. We had little problem in the initial, that's a technical problem. However, the seminar and the, or the webinar went through very smoothly. Uh, with this, we come to the end of our today's uh, seminar. However, uh, I don't know, there had been a lot of discussion regarding the Indo-Pacific region. How do we contain China or the China is responding? How to maintain superiority in the East and South China Sea and also in the Indian Ocean? I don't know, after the COVID-19, uh, who will be the winner? To my understanding, what we are expecting, it could neither be United States nor China, maybe somebody else. We don't know, we have to see, see the world order. What's the world order? Dr. M. Tiasar is laughing. He will be very well to uh, explain this situation. However, another point I would like to bring it here is the two greatest disaster and calamities we are passing. And that's the first one is the uh, inherited, is the global climate for which the global warming and Bangladesh is one of the important